Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mariah and here on my channel I post lifestyle and university related content. So if you're interested in it, make sure you subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss a video. So, as you can see from the title, I'm going to give you guys my ultimate guide to applying for physiotherapy. If you've seen it in my previous videos, you will know that I apply for a master's in physiotherapy. But wait, if you're applying for the undergrad, stick around because I still have some undergrad things I'm talking about. So here in this video, I'm going to cover the aspects of research, entry requirements and personal statements. I know you're looking for stuff about open days or interviews. I have videos coming out about that at a later point. But yeah, so look around for those. Even more reason to subscribe. <laughs> anyway, just to get onto it. So let's jump right into research. So for research, the main thing or the first thing I think you should do is research actually what a physiotherapist does because you want to double check that what you think a physiotherapist does is actually what they do because you don't want to apply for the degree and then think it's going to be something else and you know <laughs> you're disappointed but yeah so I think that's the main important thing to do first do that through work experience do that through going on the NHS website and figuring out you know what it is the job entails um <laughs> sorry if you see you looking down I kind of typed up all the stuff because it's just easier to make sure I don't miss anything for you guys because we're going to cover quite a bit, but I hope this video isn't too long. All right, so once you've researched what they they do, be honest with yourself. Is it actually something you see yourself doing? If that's a yes, then yay, you are going to apply for physiotherapy. But the next thing after that is obviously to find out which universities offer the course. And there's three different ways I did it. So one, if you're applying for an undergrad, you can use UCAS because that's simple because you're going to apply for UCAS. Just put that in there and search physiotherapy degrees and it will show you those. If you're not applying through UCAS, which typically if we're applying for a postgraduate, you don't apply for UCAS, you apply directly to the university. So a way of searching rather than going on Google and trying to find out all the universities that have the pre-registration degree, what I think you could do is go through the CSP or the HCPC website, because both of those websites have a list of universities that have like, been accredited and approved to run the physiotherapy degree. All you have to do is change the filters and you will find that there. So it's just simple, save yourself time, save me a lot of time. Anyway, once you've done that, in terms of the research aspect, I think you should definitely look at the modules that are on offer there in terms of the way they structure them. Look at the course structure because every course structure is different and it depends on your needs. So look at how they teach the course. Look at the placement to teaching ratio. Look at um, other things like go to open days. But like I said, do another video on that later. But like do those little things to help yourself. And before I forget, when it comes to the undergrad, when you're applying, you can only apply for five different universities because you're applying for UCAS and that's all they allow. But when you're applying for the postgraduate, you have unlimited amounts of applications you can put out because you're applying typically directly to the university. There's no limitations there. All right. Another thing to look out for. I'm not sure if this also applies for the undergrad degree because I couldn't find anything about it. But if you're doing the master's, see what suits your needs in terms of are they starting in January or are they starting in September? So I applied for six different universities and I applied for one that starts in January and I chose to reject it because I'm on this gap here and I was kind of like, yeah, for various reasons, chose to reject it, but I just didn't want to go to uni in January. So that's why I'm doing the September entry rather than the January entry, but that could differ for someone. Someone may not want such like a full gap year. Someone may want a couple months off. So do what suits you best. And additional tips, as I said, is attend open days virtual open days are just as helpful as the in-person open days to attend those another thing that you could do to gain more insight about the university or about the degree is to talk to people on unibuddy some universities are actually involved in this and you can talk to people who not always people that do your course but you can talk to people that go to university and get some insight that way so i think it's a good thing and i did that personally Another thing to find out when it comes to research is find out when the applications close. So when you're applying for the undergrad, typically applications close on the 15th of January. But when you're applying for the postgraduate, it really depends for each university when they want to close the applications. So keep an eye out for that. I personally recommend applying early because you still have to do other components to get the offer, like an interview and so on and so forth, but I'll talk about that later. But anyway, now moving on to entry requirements. In terms of entry requirements, for grades, when it came to the undergrad, it was a little hard to find. I could only find stuff about A-levels. I'm sorry if you're doing a VTEC or doing IB. I understand your frustration because I did VTEC. I'm trying to find out what's needed for things. 
but I couldn't find it because I really think it differs per university because when I was at Sixth Form and I did BTEC Sports, I thought the course was called BTEC Sports when in fact it was called like BTEC Sports Coaching and something. But every uni can like decide whether they want that specific BTEC. So double check with the university. IB, I'm not sure, but I'm assuming it's the same thing with BTEC. Double check with the university about what they class for the alternatives. But if you're applying for A-levels, they say that you should do up to two to three A-levels and at least one of them being a science. And for GCSEs, I know they've changed the numbers now, but I've got five, eight, five A stars to see GCSEs. Yeah, not sure what the number conversion is. I just went based off what I'm used to calling it. <laughs> um, yeah, but when you're applying for the postgraduate, sorry, just you know, when you're applying for the postgraduate degree, you can get into physiotherapy degrees with a 2-2. Personally, I recommend a 2-1. Because 2 2, you're still able to get into places, but your places are limited in comparison to your options that you will have if you got a 2 1. On top of that, you have to come from a relevant degree. I can't say what they would class as relevant and not relevant. I did sport and exercise science, you know, that because I did anatomy and all that, that comes in there. But double check with the university, it can't hurt to ask them, and I'm sure they'll be more than willing to help you if they see that you really want to do physiotherapy. Okay, so another entry requirement component is work experience. Some universities may actually tell you how much work experience they want to see from you. I had a university tell me they wanted at least a week of physiotherapy work experience. Some unis differ the, like what they class as work experience. I can't talk too much on that. Maybe at some point I'll talk to other people who are studying physiotherapy and put a video together for you guys about that. But at this point in time, I can only speak on my experiences. I'd say get a range of different areas of physiotherapy or just different backgrounds and areas of work experience so I did work experience in the NHS I volunteered while I was studying abroad and I did like general working and helping out at university little things like that and societies like St John build that as long as you can relate the skills and relate why it helps you with physiotherapy or help you be a good like physiotherapy student I'm sure they will allow it but if you're concerned double check with the university before going forward with that Another entry requirement components are passing your interview. That's important. The best tip I can give you for your interview is read your personal statement before you started. Um, because you know, you don't want to think, I mean, especially for the postgraduate, because you've got so many different personal statements because I recommend you tailor that, but I'll get onto that later. Um, you don't want to think you're, you said something on one personal statement when you actually said it on another and then mentioned that in the interview. So make sure you read that before, make sure you're calm, well-dressed, so on and so forth and arrive early but yeah i do a whole video on my experiences so keep an eye out for that and subscribe but yeah another component other than interviews is you have to pass your dbs check health check and immunization check that's just it's a requirement you have to do it um if you do have anything like with your dbs that you're slightly worried about i'm sure you can contact the university and they will let you know whether they will allow it okay another thing is your references so for the undergrad your reference goes through UCAS I'm not sure whether you have to do two as well because for the postgraduate I have to give two references but for the undergrad like I said it goes through UCAS and typically you have to prompt someone through UCAS like put their details in and the UCAS will prompt them to send the reference directly to UCAS for postgraduate you don't get that privilege I mean occasionally some universities will allow you to prompt someone through their website but most of the time you have to do the chasing and you have to do the constant emailing and being on someone's back to write your reference for you but yeah another thing for postgraduate people is that you might be asked to prove re like research so most of my universities that I applied for just took my transcript and they're like okay cool I see you did a dissertation like a dissertation fine you did like some form of research another university I had to write a research training like proof of training a lot what I learned what applications I use how did I conduct my dissertation and sending your dissertation isn't allowed you're not allowed to send like the full couple pages no you have to full and explain some of them I think will ask for your module um description for the dissertation so they know what you covered to make sure that you're actually hitting the requirements required at a master's level but yeah that's something to bear in mind now finally on to personal statements i have a few tips so the first thing i must get out of the way is if you're applying for the undergraduate degree you're only allowed 400 characters for the personal statement because you're applying for ucas and that's all ucas will hold so bear that in mind and bear that in mind that you're applying if you're applying for all five like you know five options of universities you have one personal statement make sure you're tailoring it that it 
appeals to all universities, not just your main one. You know, I think it's just polite that way. And uh, But when you're going for the postgraduate, as I said, you can write different personal statements because you're applying directly to the university. The thing to bear in mind is that the length of these personal statements can vary, so I can't give you a strict number, but I had a personal statement which was 400 words, and then I had a personal statement that was up to three A4 pages you could go up to. So, you know, it, it really differs. My advice in that sense is start with the smallest and then go up to the, the largest one because once you start with the smallest, you know the important details that you have to condense in there and then you can just expand on them later on down. But after that, I'd say, make sure you like, what's it called? some of the universities will actually tell you what they want you to write about. So check that on their website because if they want you to just say, okay, why this university, why physiotherapy and what experience you have, just do that don't then go on to say more if that's not been asked of you. And those typically are the universities with a very tight word count. So make sure you're doing what they asked. It's not a trick, trust me. <laughs> okay. Another thing obviously is why physiotherapy, <laughs> the common sense, they're gonna ask you that. Another tip is do not list, make sure you're actually expanding on what you're saying. So don't just be like, oh, I volunteered in a hospital. Okay, so did Jane. Like, you know what I mean? Say, I volunteered in the hospital and I got to see this and seeing that showed me that physios can do this or I learned this and I took these skills away from the experience. Really, you know, build on what you're saying. Don't just have it there like that. Cause I think that's a common mistake people make with personal statements. And I'm not perfect. I used to do that in my old personal statements I've looked back on and it's just, oh, I'm like, why? <laughs> um, but yeah, like reflect on events and experiences. If you like, when you're applying, obviously you've got to reflect on previous like studies you've done, for example. So if you're in sixth form, you reflect on the A-levels you've taken and how they prepared you for the degree. And if you're applying for the postgraduate, you talk about your previous degree and how it's prepared you or how it may have not prepared you. Like, And even if your previous degree isn't completely relevant, um, you can even be like, okay, I learned skills about how to manage my time, how to organize, how to be a student, how to do research. Little things like that actually are transferable and can help you in that sense so don't fear if you don't have a direct like not doing a science degree kind of thing another thing is do not waffle in your personal statement <laughs> make sure it flows and get someone else to read over it i personally like used word because it does the reading out loud and it helped me recognize little errors i had in there i got family members to read my personal statement do that as well it kind of helps because you will miss those little errors where someone else can pick that up Another tip I said, like, yeah, make it flow. And if you want, mention things you do outside of like studying, as long as it's relevant. So I mentioned the fact that I film, I didn't mention YouTube, but I, yeah, I mentioned the fact that I like doing videos. I mentioned that I like photography and puzzles and stuff like that. But I didn't just list it. I was like, okay, I like these things because like, you know, I find them relaxing outside of studying, but the skills from that also can help me in physio because attention to detail, I like to be organized, certain little things like that. You can relate and get away with it in that sense. But yeah, that's all I have for you guys in terms of what my guide is to applying for physiotherapy. If this video has helped you in any manner, make sure you give this a thumbs up and share it on because you know, we all wanna share these resources for other people to help them with this process because we all know resources are tight over here in the UK for physiotherapy. So yeah, let's help each other out. And that's all for me today. Thank you guys.